All right, so we'll get going. Um, in terms of agenda, it's very similar to every gardening club. We'll spend just a few minutes with welcome and announcements. Um, status updates, uh, we have about 30 minutes reserved for that. And then we have really um, about 20 total minutes at the end for just, you know, kind of discussion about the projects. Um, and then if any of the any of the, the folks presenting have specific asks they want to re, you know, highlight again, um, how the community could get involved, anything they need to help with testing or feedback or anything like that. Um, we have that toward the end. Um, so we'll get going. So a few announcements we have. Um, the, if you're following major grants uh, and, the, and uh, I should say the major grant review committee and how things are progressing there, uh, there were three live streams uh, last week they're all recorded. Uh, there's a link uh, there to the recordings. Um, you can also just, you know, go to the forums and, and search for those as well. But really good. Uh, three different moderators, uh, three different sets of candidates. Great questions. It was great to hear their responses in person. Um, they've also submitted like written responses to the to the same set of questions for those that uh, candidates that couldn't make the live stream. But those are definitely worth um, checking out. Um, just today, um, ECC had a couple of, uh, of, of blog posts out there and a couple of really exciting announcements. Um, today, we released the, the source code for Halo 2 and kind of officially announced that project and its intent. And along with that, we, we released uh, a Halo 2 technical explainer. Um, both of those are linked um, off of our, our, uh, the ECC uh, blog page. Um, also, this week on Thursday, we have uh, our next Arborist call. For those that may not be familiar with Arborist calls, um, those are uh, calls essentially focused on protocol development. So any team that is uh, participating in protocol development, and in this case at the moment it's ECC, um, the foundation, uh, Bolt Labs who we're working with on uh, TZEs, T, uh, Transparent Zcash Extensions, um, but it's also the, the, the ground or kind of the, we're laying the groundwork for major grants where we do anticipate multiple protocol teams uh, working on Zcash at some level. So it's just a great way to discuss um, anything related to protocol development. So I'd encourage you to, to join that as well if you're interested. And then also there's the, uh, for just kind of a, a bigger summary of, of all the announcements in the Zcash ecosystem is the, the weekly update um, that's in the forum as well. All right, um, okay, so today we have three speakers. We have Holmes from Zbay. Um, Mitchell from Zcash Observatory and Chili Bob um, is going to talk about a new uh, point of sale app he's developing called Zonkey. Um, okay, so with that, I will turn it over to Holmes. And Holmes, did you want to share your screen? You just want me to keep this one up? How would you like to do that? Um, I would like to share my screen. Okay, all right, well, I'll stop sharing and then you can just let me know when you're done. And um, so we've got about 10 minutes each, roughly, for the presentations, and then we can, you know, we have a little bit of flexibility, um, but we can uh, we could go over that a tad if we wanted to. But I'll, I'll roughly try to keep a timer and just kind of remind folks that we're, uh, you know, kind of how we're how we're going. So, um, cool. okay, uh, all right, all right. Can everybody see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So um, the clock is now ticking. Um, I just started a fresh install of the Light Wallet version of Zbay. Um, and I'm, I'm doing this, I haven't planned this out that much. Um, so this is one of these demo kind of exciting demos, but, um, but the, the intent of the demo is to show that Zbay now starts really fast because we're using all the light wallet stuff. And there's a bit more to it than that. Um, because we're also doing a bunch of importing of viewing keys and stuff like that, that, that sometimes is totally not fast. So we had to work around that too. Um, but yeah, just to introduce things, um, Zbay is a, uh, a Zcash wallet, essentially, um, but one that leverages the messaging capabilities, capabilities of Zcash to make it really easy for people to send each other messages and also to, um, to post products for sale and also to um, communicate with sellers and buy those products, all with Zcash and all right now anyway on chain. Um, so, uh, Zbay right now is a desktop app only. Um, that's mostly because of cost constraints. We don't have a budget uh, adequate to develop for multiple platforms yet, but there's nothing inherently, especially now that we've switched to a light wallet model that prevents us from making mobile apps. 
so um, these are just some intro screens um, to walk through. But I just a few minutes ago before the call, I was able to start a fresh install of Zebay Lite and have it get up and syncing um, without, um, you know, in just a few minutes. And I think actually it's already synced now and it's just doing some final steps. Um, yep, there it is. Okay, cool. So between when I started talking and right now, um, Zebay has gone from user just installed it to now users online. There's a little bit more of a delay before we can send a message um, because I'm still waiting for an incoming transaction from a faucet that we run that gives users a couple cents of Zach so that they can start sending messages and registering a username. Um, but right now uh, the user can be in the UI, UI can see um, items that have already been posted to some of the built-in channels um, and uh, and can um, just generally start getting a sense of the, the Zbay um, UX. So this is a really, really huge deal because, all right, when we first made our first version of Zbay um, and got it running on, you know, just with Zcash D, uh, I think syncing took like two or three days on a normal computer with a pretty fast internet connection. Uh, and you know, when something takes two or three days, <laughs> there's like two or three days worth of time where something can get messed up. So sometimes two or three days actually meant, you know, many days or never if, you know, something got messed up with the user's internet connection or something. And the other huge problem was that, um, was that, uh, and this is true until, but this is still true right up until when we release Zbay Lite, um, running Zbay at all required a full node, which required 25 gigs of disk space, uh, which is not, is not great. Um, so there, there was an intermediate step where since, uh, since December, I believe, or no, actually since January, February, we, um, we found a kind of a, a few tricks through some tinkering to get the full node version of Zbay to sync, not in days, but in hours. So until, um, so, so, you know, if you go and download the existing release of Zbay full node, it takes about uh, two, one and a half, two hours to sync on a pretty fast connection. Um, and we achieved that by uh, essentially figuring out, essentially figuring out how to give Zcash D a starting state by um, putting all of its data uh, on, or by, by giving it a bunch of starting data and then having it rescan that data. And then we deliver that data as fast as possible by putting it all on CloudFront and, you know, spending a buck or two every time someone installs Zbay, which wasn't especially scalable. Um, but that got the syncing time down to an hour and a half. Um, and now um, with the launch of Zbay Lite, which I was hoping would be ready, you know, I, hope, I was hoping to be able to announce the launch of it today, but it looks like uh, I'll have to wait until the next uh, call for that or because I, I think we'll probably be launching next week. Um, but with the ability to use a Lite wallet, um, you know, users can now get started immediately and the and Zbay starts to feel like a normal application. Um, our goal ultimately is to make it so that sending messages and buying things in this app is about as fast as low and low latency as using Slack or Discord. We're not going to be able to do that all on chain, but um, but we have some ideas for for how to do it. Um, mostly inspired by this this uh, anonymous messaging app Ricochet and the work that um, Sarah Jane Lewis is doing on Coach. Um, so let's see, another, I guess the last note would be, um, oh, another another thing that we were, were, were we had to figure out for this, um, for this to work is that even once, even when we switched to a light wallet model, we were still seeing sync times of an hour or an hour and a half because there are some channels in Zbay where we can't, um, we can't, we have to go back in time and look at transactions that have already happened. So for most light wallet use cases, the user's starting with an empty wallet, they've not received any money yet. And so they can assume that there are no transactions that have already happened that they care about. But in Zbay's case, that's not the case. So we want to be able to show people messages that have already been sent when they join. So they can kind of catch up on the conversation. We especially want to be able to show them items that have already been posted to uh, channels where there are things for sale so that they can 
you know, so they're not only seeing items so that there isn't an incentive for sellers to repost items every single day or week to, so that they'll be visible to new users. Like that seems like a bad idea. So we need to be able to go back in time and see older transactions. And when you do that um, by importing a viewing key uh, in the light wallet model, you actually have to go and download all those blocks again and um, you know, interpret them again, looking for the transactions that you have viewing keys for, and then also go and download all of the memo data for all those things. And that takes some time. Um, so what we're doing instead is, and, and I'm, I'm really interested in people's feedback on this from a security and, anti -sens and censorship resistance point of view. Um, right now, what we're doing in order to create the experience of starting immediately is um, downloading, I'm sorry, observing that the that when users download Zbay, they're essentially trusting the app to interpret um, the blockchain for them. I mean, the, the channels that we've included in Zbay are viewing keys that come hard coded with the app. If they, if the user didn't was not trusting us, or rather, if we wanted to be to do something malicious, we could simply switch out those viewing keys. Um, and that's true for the username registration system too. When people register usernames, they're sending messages to a viewing key to register their username. And so identities are getting registered on chain, um, but they're getting interpreted by the Zbay app. So if, if, the, if we want, if the, uh, the creators of Zbay wanted to um, subvert that system in some way, we would have the power to. Of course, someone could fork us to, to correct that, um, that problem or address that problem. But anyway, um, the, what, we're, what we're doing in order to ensure that Zbay Lite starts immediately, uh, as opposed to making users wait for this rescan, going back in time, looking at all the transactions that have happened that the, their Zbay knows about, is to bundle that data with the app directly and start them at a very recent, or start syncing at a very recent, um, recent block height. Uh, so the app comes with data, we start syncing more recently, and then going forward, all the transactions they're receiving are from the, the Light Wallet server. We're also interested in going back and rechecking in the background so that if Zbay ever through an error or through a security failure um, or through, or because we were compelled to, uh, censored some of the messages that were being bundled with the Zbay app, the user would be able to prime. Sorry, hello? Um, yeah, I think that may have just been background noise, but actually Dara did have a, sorry, Holmes, Dara did have a couple of questions, I think maybe in the chat. Dara, you want to just, um, sure. uh, just yeah. state those down? Can you hear me? You're pretty, pretty light, um, pretty low. Can you hear me water. now? Yes, I much can better. Hear you, yeah. Oh, okay, right. So I was asking um, to what extent Zbay relies on infrastructure writ, um, uh, run by your company? Um, right now, the reliance points are the faucet that I mentioned, where we send a, a few pennies of Zach to users that um, so that they can get started. Uh, and there's an API that eBay hits when the user's wallet is first created to request uh, a small amount of money from that faucet. So that's infrastructure we operate. There's also a price oracle um, that we operate that sends the USD Zach price over um, over. Uh, Z to Z message to an address that's in in the client, and it does that every six hours or so. So that's something we operate. It would be awesome if somebody else wanted to do that. Um, and for the light wallet infrastructure, we are using uh, Adikia's. We're using the same stuff that Zach Wallet is using. So we're, I believe right. that's a so light, wallet, light wallet D created by and maintained by Adikia. We would love for there to be some sort of official institutional universal light wallet D server. But um, but yeah, we don't intend to run our own, although we'll probably spin one up to experiment with performance optimizations if we run into any performance problems. So, so is all of that open source? Um, is all of the... Uh, the the faucet, the, uh, everything that you just said? Ah, you know, I'm not sure if, I mean, the faucet is and the price yeah, are, I mean, are it's, it's trivial. Trivial, yeah. but yeah we should put i i that's a good that's a good point i don't know if those are if those are in i don't think those are in public repos and we can put them up okay cool 
Very good. Thanks. Okay, well, uh, thank, you. thank you, Holmes. We're, we're up on time, but we do have uh, more time allotted at the end for, you know, questions and things of that nature. Awesome. So, Thanks a lot. Yeah, um, no, it'd be great, great, great work. work. <laughs> actually yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, that's always a risk, right? When you're doing a, a live <laughs> demo is, uh, what will the demo gods yeah. be, uh, be favorable for you today? <laughs> and it's so, even oh, to the part where I can send a message. Um, yeah. So, there we go. All right. Okay, okay cool. well, I'm going to uh, share my screen screen again. Um, let's see. I think, oh, Holmes, I think you may need to stop sharing yours for just oh, a moment. So uh, how do I do that? Um, should be see. maybe toward the bottom or in the little control at the top. I, oh, yeah, here it is. Cool. Okay. okay, perfect. Perfect. All right, let's see if I can find it again. That's always one challenge with Zoom or any, I guess, any app like that is um, is fine in the right window. Um, so anyway, on the slide is just information on the project, um, things of that nature. At the end, we'll kind of come back for a community ask, how to get involved. We'll kind of reiterate that. Um, so next up is Mitchell from Zcash Observatory. And Mitchell, would you like to uh, share your screen? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You got it. I will stop sharing. Thank you very much. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Are you, yes. can people yeah, see yes. the? Yes, yes, yes oh, we okay. can. Yeah, I think okay. everybody, I think everyone mutes themselves. So <laughs> no, everyone's scrambling, yeah, sorry, to un, uh, to, everyone's scrambling to unmute so they can tell you they can see it. So. Awesome. Okay, so I'll keep this uh, short and sweet. So uh, you've seen these slides before. Part of the observatory was putting together a network security suite based on a series of GitHub issues that the foundation had highlighted. Uh, and so we run an entire network of these observatory nodes to collect extra information. We're going to pool that information into a research database. And then on top of that, we have uh, a dashboard that has both network performance and network security features. Uh, we'll demo that towards the end uh, in a minute. So uh, where we're at right now is the things that are a work in progress. We finished the back end. Uh, that was thanks to funding from the Zcash Foundation. And then we're working on UI improvements, uh, double spend and selfish mining alerts, the research database, uh, adding the API and developer pages to that, and then automated deployment. Uh, so the, in terms of roadmap, the solo node, which has the logging alerts and pipeline is completed, uh, again, thanks to the Zcash Foundation. And then now we wanna build end user tooling, which includes the front end, the research database, the API and deployment. And we're going to run that through the Gitcoin Grants program. Uh, next round is coming up very shortly, so you'll see us set up there. And actually, I will turn it over now to Pranav, who's the engineer on this project, to do a real quick demo. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick. So this is the current, uh, well, can everyone see this? Just making sure. Yeah, great. Uh, this is just uh, the first iteration of ZForks, uh, kind of the, the name that we got for this uh, dashboard here. Uh, over here, you can see the, just the recent blocks. That's just, you know, normal uh, observatory uh, explorer stuff, right? We have the height. Uh, when we receive this block, and this is a little new, uh, the propagation time. This is basically uh, the time between when our first peer validated this block to the last peer. So you can see that this very last block, it took about one and a half seconds for the whole network to accept it. And that, that's kind of an indication of health of like how fast blocks go through the network. Uh, on the right over here, you can see the recent fork. Uh, this, is, this just detects when was the last fork in the, like the past five forks. Here you can see that one happened about 20 minutes ago, just about the start of this meeting we had, and, uh, and the list goes on. And we kind of have a database of all the forks that have ever happened that we've seen since we've started observing all this data. Down here, we have some charts. On the left over here, we have the block propagation time. That is the same as uh, this column over here with the recent block, uh, but just expanded to pretty much everything that we've ever saw. Uh, over here on the right, we have the fork frequency. This is basically um, how often do we see forks. Uh, right now, uh, it just happens so that uh, each bar is about a week. 
So we're kind of averaging between 20 to 30 ports per week, sometimes dipping below and above it. Uh, this is still a very uh, narrow uh, time frame. We kind of want to see how forts behave like over maybe six to 12 months, uh, you know, between updates, between mining updates, node updates, and just to see if like software updates affect node frequency. Uh, I have a question. Um, yeah. yeah. What's the definition of fork here? Is there, there a minimum number of um, blocks in, on either side? Uh, I'm sorry, could you, could you repeat your question? What's the definition of a fork? Is there, there a minimum number of um, ah, right. blocks? Right, so basically uh, the way we define a fork is um, any time that uh, we find two blocks with the same parent hash, right? So it could be two okay, or Okay, so, so even, even one block. Yeah, um, even one block. Yeah, okay, yeah. right, thanks. Uh, down here, uh, this is just the block size of the last 100 blocks um, in kilobytes over here. Uh, this is, it's a good indication of like transaction volume uh, to see if, you know, more, more transactions are flooding the network or less. And uh, lastly, this chart over here is just observed block time. Um, the observed, set observed block time for Zcash is, I think, about 70 seconds. And this is just kind of like, um, just seeing all of them as we see them. Um, and, and it does seem to average about 70 seconds. Uh, real quick to see the work in progress pages. This is just, uh, when you click a block, this is what you see. Uh, later on, we wanna have more observatory features, like uh, kind of a list of maybe uh, like who saw this block first and who saw it last and how many people saw this block, how long it took for it to validate. Um, and also a bunch of other observatory features. If you click on a fork, uh, this is the, the thing that pops up over here. Uh, it shows you uh, how the fork started over here, which block started the fork and which block uh, ended the fork. And you can see that uh, this block came in first and then it was the one that it validated over here. Uh, it'll be a little more apparent uh, what how this works uh, as we keep working on it, uh, but we do wanna uh, this is kind of one of the main features that we want to advertise for, for this block explorer. Um, and that's about it. Uh, we, we definitely want to, there's so much more to do here. Uh, there's definitely a lot of work to be done and uh, we're very excited for what this could be. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, very nice, very nice demo. Um, Mitchell, do you do you have more you wanted to cover? Still have uh, a few minutes left, or we can take any questions no, we'll anyone pull has. Out on the demo. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, um, I'll reshare my screen again. Um, I did want to double check with you on this link. Um, I don't know if that one's actually the correct link. I. I Tried to follow it earlier. I think I got a 404. So if you could let us know. Uh, it maybe should, put it should it... work. Okay, maybe I maybe I copied the wrong text, but we can double check it. I, I updated it. I updated it this morning. So. Oh, okay. All right. I bet I I bet I checked a, an older one. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. Okay. And next up, we have Chili Bob to talk about Zonky. Um, hmm. Okay. So I'm going to need to share my screen. All right. I'll stop again. Okay. And. That one. Okay, so you should be able to see that. Yes, uh, looks good. And you have you have plenty of time as well, so we're we're doing. All good. right, okay. Well, if the demo gods are going to be kind, I might actually try and show it working. But we'll see. That'd okay. be awesome. <laughs> All right. So um, for those that don't know, a zonkey is what happens when you mix a zebra and a donkey, and they're kind of cute and fluffy. So we'd start with that. Um, this is basically a point of sale, but it's for where people buy directly from people. So, you know, in a shop, in a bar, in a market, um, somewhere you'd normally use a credit card in person. Um, and it's, it works with prices set into whatever there are in the fiat world. Um, and at the moment it just works in dollars, but it'll work in other currencies too. Um, and it will look up and do a conversion to the um, crypto equivalent. And this app handles Zcash and Ycash. So there are choices. And I've 
very much built it around using Zek Wallet because this uses view keys. Now, there was a predecessor to Zonkey, which was called Zatsuma, which used full nodes for Zcash, Ycash, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Lightning, and it took about a week to build it, which is the same sort of pain that um, Holmes was talking about. Um, but with this setup, um, using a view key, you can effectively subscribe to a service, so you don't actually need your own node. Um, provided you have a wallet which can produce your view key and you know register it with a, a Zonky node, you can just download the app and you're ready to go. But I'm going to be picking Holmes's brain about using light wallet infrastructure because at the moment I'm still using full nodes. Um, the other thing that I added to this is, whoop, there we go, uh, private messaging. Now, um, the clients form part of a, a network. It's a broadcast type network where everything is AES encrypted. So it's reasonably trivial for a client to send messages to a group of other clients, to another client individually, or to broadcast to everyone and just keep it all nice and secure. And with the keys being generated on each device and you're, you're choosing as to who gets them, it becomes your own little private messaging thing. And the application initially was, say you have a shop and you've got five people selling, you know, like five waiters in a bar or something, they can chat amongst themselves privately about what's going on or individually. Okay, so the basic components. Um, the app is built for Android. Uh, and it's, I'm only actually going to build it for Android because I don't own any AI things. I don't really like them either, but anyway. Um, so you have the Zonky clients. You have um, an Echo server, which is built on WebSockets. So the clients connect to that. And you have a, I guess it's actually a WebSocket client, which you know, bridges between a full node so it talks you know, to the RPC interfaces on that, and it then interacts with messages that come across this, this encrypted broadcast network. Now, the shop owner would use Zek Wallet or Yek Wallet to take their shielded address and a view key. They then send that via encrypted memo to whoever is running the node, and basically to register for the service. Now it means that the node only actually knows their shielded address and their view key. It doesn't get any other information about who the client is, but it gives it enough to you know, register an account for them. And that account is you know, a 12 character random salt, which it can then hash with the customer's um, shielded address to make an encryption key. And it sends that back to the customer via shielded memo. So that's all of the, the registration in, interaction happens in a, a nice secure way. And this is the application itself. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead a slide. That registration information he appears here. So you can see there's a, a shielded address and there's a password for both Zcash and for Ycash and some other common information like the name of the shop the username and a, a URI for the um, WebSocket server that you're going to connect to. And you can then share that information just by letting another Zonky client scan that QR code. And I've set this up so that all of the QR codes are actually buttons. So you click, press the QR code, it turns on the scanner. So with this, you would have one person who does the registration, gets their Zonky working, the other people that are working in the same shop would download the app, click the button and scan one that's already set up and then they're good to go. I did the same thing for messaging. So you, know, you have your own like personal key that's going to en encrypt your messages and you can share that with other people. So you can send over this broadcast network a message and only the, only the person you, who has your key can read it. And obviously, 
a button to change your key if you want to just disappear in. Um, so you can't talk to them and no one can talk to you. Um, on messaging, the keys are basically used like addresses. So if I reply to a message that somebody sends me, um, they're going to get my key so they can then talk to me individually. Uh, but other than that, all the sharing of keys is done in person by scanning someone's code. And um, the last little screen on here is just a, a basic chat. So this is what you get for the contacts. So going back to the point of sale, um, I've tried to keep it very, very simple. And I stole all of the user interface from the ECC reference wallet because it's really nice. And it was a great starting point. You have a, just a little calculator interface which lets you put in a, a fiat value. You press the coin that you want. It then presents you with a QR code which you can scan. And the best user experience at the moment is with using Zek Wallet, I'm afraid to say. Um, Zek Wallet supports um, payment URIs. So that I can produce a QR code that contains um, an order number string, which you know my little order processing system will look for, and obviously the amount, and settle that into a memo. So with Zek Wallet, it's you know point scan, click send, and you're done. Uh, with the other wallets, like the Y Simple for Y Cash, and with the Reference Wallet, um, you can only actually scan the shielded address, and then you have to manually type in the amount and the order number. So there's, there's errors with that uh, that'll creep in. Um, also, it, because you can edit a memo before you send it, there's possibilities of a, a customer messing with their order. You know, they can they could scan it on Zek Wallet, but then they could edit the amount or they could edit the order number and then click send. But then the system will not confirm their order which you'll see on the right hand side here. Okay, um, on the messaging, um, I did a thing called Gateway XYZ a while back, which was back to backing a Zcash and a Ycash node for, so they could exchange memos between them, or the content of memos between them, and connecting it to all sorts of other APIs for Twitter and Reddit and so on. So I've taken that, melted it down and pointed it at this. So you can now actually send a message and broadcast it to all of the Zonky clients from a from a wallet, you know, from Zek Wallet or from anything, just by sending it to a shielded address. Um, now, same thing that with the gateway system, we didn't really see any spam on it because there's, there's not that many people using this thing already. Um, and also there's a cost involved. So you can make it a little bit more expensive and it'll cut down the spam. Or you could go the other way and make the whole thing advert supported and make it very expensive. Um, we then end up with, I've been playing with Z to Zs. So we've got Zadas to Zonkeys and Zonkeys to Zadas and Zonkeys to Zeals from talking from different sources to different groups. And while writing that, I came across a, a thing called um, Android Intents with broadcasters and receivers which means that you could turn a um, shielded address into a effectively a button which would summon the wallet to send a memo and it would start up a completely different application, which seems a great way of integrating everything together. Okay, um, other things, as I say, I'm using the full node. Um, so I'm triggering everything by using wallet notify and block notify events, which is very simple to set up. Um, so when you get a new transaction come in, you know, without confirmations, zero, con zero confirmation, um, it'll fire off a script and it'll give it the tr um, transaction ID. Um, I have a little piece of code and it's another a very trivial piece of code that takes that TX ID, looks up the transaction to find the address that it's related to which is probably just one that relates to a customer's view key or one of the other registration functions, and then does the appropriate thing. So I have one node doing many different things based on which address 
receive the transaction. Um, one other part I have is um, sending messages out through memos and you obviously have to do that by spending unspent notes with enough confirmations. So I spool those up, and I write them into write them into a directory as if you were spooling email. And then every time a new block comes in, um, I look up to see status of my unspent notes in my sending address and send them all out. And I can batch them up so there are many, many, trans many, many outputs onto one transaction. Um, and okay, why cache? I put that on here. Uh, basically, it has the same privacy properties. You know, it does the shielded memos and it's a lot lower cost. So um, you can use that for messaging. And you can mine a little bit if you need that. Um, the other idea that comes out of this is that each part of this system can have, it's like a little niche that someone could offer, offer a service and perhaps charge for it. You know, they could perhaps earn themselves a little bit of Zcash. Somebody has to be operating um, nodes, whether it's a, a like client node or a full node, doesn't matter. Uh, but that's offering a service which is to provide these payment notifications and somewhere that you can register your view key so that you don't have to run a node because somebody else is. Um, the other part of the setup is the uh, WebSocket server, which is really not much of a server at all. It's a tiny piece of code which listens on listens for new connections and then relays that whatever was said to everyone else who's connected at the time. But somebody has to run it. Um, somebody has to probably put the um, SSL certificates on it. There's a little bit involved and they don't have to be free. So again, another little piece that somebody could offer as a service and charge for. Um, um, another part that's interesting to me is that Right. These people could offer a service and charge for it, but they don't know who their customers are at all. All they know is a shielded address. And I quite like that. So the current status, um, it works roughly. Um, it has a few bugs and issues, but um, it's getting actually very close to releasing for testing. Um, I want to develop the messaging a little bit more. We have Zec Pages, which is a nice little directory for contacts and with a messaging app that can send out memos. That's, that's a useful thing to bring in. And Zboard as well, which is a, a kind of fun content. And I also want to explore connecting these WebSocket servers to each other so they can become clients to another WebSocket server, which would allow the whole thing to scale out. And you could have you know, many, many of these installations and messages could relay between you know, across this whole network. Um, my plans for it, um, this is actually, a, you know, it's a project. I'm an enthusiast. I'm not planning on building some huge commercial empire out of it. So it's going to be released on GitHub for anyone to play with and develop. Um, it might make it onto um, Google Play Store. Um, it won't make it onto iOS, or at least not by me, but obviously other people will be welcome to do that. And that's me. And the little mascot on it is called Spot. Nice. <laughs> Here you go. I'm, I'm so, waiting for you to get Spot animated so we, so we can see Spot talk. So that. <laughs> okay. But, well, um, maybe I'll try that. I'll, maybe I'll try yeah. for that next time. Okay. Um, very good. If there's time, I can probably share it and see if this demo thing is going to work. How are we doing? Um, got about five minutes, if that works. All right. Let's it's try and barking in the background. <laughs> it's a great, it's a 70 kilo Great Dane. My but, goodness. Um, when he wants out, he wants out. It has to happen. Right. Um, Either right. that or he'll make his own way out, I'm sure. So that's basically <laughs> like a zebra. Pretty yes. much. Okay, so let's try this. Um, okay, so I should have changed the screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So this is. Um, it working. So that's the registration page I was talking about. Um, let me connect to it. Um, I'll show you the, the messaging side of it first. That's really easy. 
Um, I've written it such that the there is no store and forward system for messages on this. That's all handled by the client. So I modeled it on you know conversations in a room. You can say something in a room and it will echo around for a while. And when you leave the room, that information goes with you. Okay, so nothing is really permanent as the like the default set it set up. Um, I want to add on with with the WebSocket servers something where you can store and archive your messages and contacts. But again, that'll be encrypted by the client before it's stored and then you know retrieved by uh, when you connect. Yeah, so you know, a little message appears. It's really not very exciting because now these messages will um, they get relayed um, over the next hour in increasingly long intervals and then after that they they fade out and disappear and obviously you can you can wipe them from your device on the payment side let's see if we can get that to work so if I We'll have a dollar's worth of Zcash. And if I fire up my Zec wallet, scan it. Yeah. Send. Confirm. And we put everything in the hands of the demo gods while it computes its transaction. Um, while it's doing that, um, the, U, the QR code that it shows by default um, is, a, is the full thing. So it has the amount and the memo and the order number all encoded into it. But as that doesn't work with um, you know, other wallets, if you click on it, it'll simplify it to just the shielded address. Right, still waiting on that wallet. Um, what else can I tell you about this? The prices, it just pulls them off CoinGecko. And each client does that itself. There's no caching or, or you know, central setup for that. And I guess I'm done until this is finished. <laughs> so, any questions? Very good. Um, great, great app. Um, and so what you did kind of what we couldn't see was you scan that QR code with your Zec wallet and sent, sent some Zec over. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, sure. it's, it's still computing its transaction, which will apparently okay. this is take up to a minute. Oh, okay. Um, right. my, my community ask which is on the slide. Um, there's more attention being brought now onto ZIP 321, which is a, like the, the formal way of coming to a standard on this. Um, so my ask would be if people can look at that comment and help it move along. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. We actually started chatting about that. Uh, well, we'd already started looking into that, but we uh, uh, yesterday kind of um, based on the some of the, the other feedback we got uh, during the other presentation uh, kind of pull that toward the top of our stack, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting that, I mean, Zonky's kind of like a, a focal point because it's where all the usage comes together with all the, the different flavors of wallets into a common app. So you, you start to see the differences between them and how they work and how they can interact. Cool. Well, looks like the payment was received. Um, oh yeah, yeah, there yep. we go. There we go, very good. Okay, well, thanks, uh, thanks, Chili Bob, for that. Um, and I guess that brings us—I know three for three on demos, right, Mitchell? Um, very good. That—that <laughs> that is an exceptional day. 